Hello, and welcome to VSCOP Science. I'm your host, David, and today we're going to be talking about Newton's laws of motion. And we have a guest star today. We have Max, one of my oldest and most beloved stuffed animals. Now, he's going to help us talk about Newton's three laws of motion. Now, before we do that, what do we know about Isaac Newton? Well, one of the most famous scientists of all time. As the myth goes, he got hit on the head with an apple, wondered about how that happened, why the apple fell, and from there eventually devised gravity. Now, Isaac Newton discovered a lot in gravity, physics, calculus, astronomy, and so much more. Though, as I said, if you guys know Newton, you probably know his three famous laws of motion. Well, let's break those down and see what each one means. Newton's first law of motion says that an object at rest will stay at rest unless an unbalanced force acts on it. So right now, Max is at rest. He's not really moving anywhere. My hand is a little bit shaky, but we're going to ignore that. Now, there are forces acting upon him. There's gravity pulling him down, and as we've discussed in a previous video, my hand is just about horizontal, so there is a normal force, a contact force pushing up on him. Now, the gravity force downwards and the contact force upwards just about balance each other out, so Max is pretty much at rest. This is what I mean by an unbalanced force. These are in balance. One that's going up equals the other going down. But if I push on him, if I add a sideways force, suddenly he will start moving. So that's what it means. An object at rest will stay at rest unless an unbalanced force. Now, it doesn't even have to be at rest. And this is where there's an interesting caveat. If Max is moving at a constant speed, one meter per second, one mile per hour, anything you guys can think of that is a unit of speed, if he's moving at that and his speed is not changing, the same thing will happen. He will keep moving at that one meter per second, at that one mile per hour, unless a force moves him up, down, left, right, in any way, he will keep moving at that constant speed unless there is an unbalanced force applied on him. Newton's second law is a little more mathematical, so we'll have to look at it on the board. Now, Newton's second law says, if an unbalanced force is applied to an object, the net change is equal to the change in momentum over time or the mass of the object times its new acceleration. So let's take a look at what that means. So the first one, the change in momentum over time. Well, the easiest way for me to see it is let's look at the units of momentum. So momentum in and of itself is kilograms times meters per second or mass times speed. So that equals a kilogram meter per second. Easy enough. Now the change in momentum over time. That means we take this whole thing and we divide it by time. We divide it by time. So that means if we crunch all this together, the units for a change in momentum over time is a kilogram, ooh, let's make sure that K actually shows up, meter per second squared. Now you guys might recognize that if you've taken any elementary or regents physics type work. Now a kilogram meter per second squared is actually equal to a Newton. And what is a Newton? A Newton is a unit of force. So that brings us back to Newton's second law. A change in momentum over time is equal to a Newton. Now we also said it was its mass times its acceleration. Now we can break this up in a different way. Here, let me get another color. We can take all this and treat it as one value. And then the kilogram that is left and treat that as one value. And then suddenly we have a kilogram or a mass times an acceleration or a meters per second squared, that is also equal to that same thing, a Newton. And this applies for any force. 
if, if you have the net force on an object, you can either use its change in momentum over time or the mass of the object times the distance and magnitude of its acceleration, or should I say the direction and magnitude of acceleration, all of these will give you the value of that net force. Newton's third law is perhaps his most famous. It goes, to any action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, what does that mean? Well, once again, we've got Max to help us out. So, let's say I want Max to move. At the moment, he's not, so I need to apply an unbalanced force. I need to push up with my hand. Now, Max is very light, so I don't really feel much. But if I take something heavier, actually I've got this board from the last video that's still sitting here. If I try to accelerate it up, I feel a tug down on my hand. Now, that is the equal and opposite reaction. If I take a 5 Newton force to bring it up against gravity, I can feel a little bit of a tug against me. And actually, if we take a uh, scale reading of that, that 5 Newton force that I apply up is actually going down on my hand. So why am I not flying down? Well, there's a bunch of different things happening. First of all, I have a lot more mass than this board, and way, way more mass than Max. So if we look back, if I have a lot more mass and my force is the same, the acceleration is going to be a whole lot less. So there's not much acceleration down that would really cause a noticeable difference. And in addition, I've got my normal force on the floor that is pushing me up and making sure I don't fall through the floor. So there's a whole lot of other things and forces going on. But it means that there's a lot of interesting applications to that. So if you jump here, I got it. If you jump, that gravitational force that the Earth takes to pull you down is actually the same amount of force that you're pulling on the earth. But once again, force is mass times acceleration. And the mass of the earth is huge. It's incomprehensible compared to the mass of a person. So the earth technically does move, but it's a very, very tiny acceleration. We're a whole lot lighter we're a whole lot less massive so we get pulled towards the earth a lot faster than the earth gets pulled towards us but the force is the same and it works no matter what two forces you're comparing if someone hits a baseball bat the force of the bat on the ball is the same as the ball on the bat but the person who's actually swinging is counteracting all that force the ball applies on the bat to make sure that it goes all the way around and you follow through and you have a good swing and all that. So those are Newton's three laws of motion. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, it would be awesome if you left a like or even subscribed. I think it would be awesome if you guys did. You can even leave a like or let me know in the comments if you want Max to reappear in another video. And speaking of other videos, if you want me to cover any specific science topic, you can message me on any social media or you can leave it down in the comments. And I will give priority to topics that are requested. But in the meantime, hope you guys have a good day. Stay cool, stay tuned. I do think these puns at the end of the videos are going to be a reoccurring thing. I hope they don't feel too forced.